fans welcome to another episode of the big group one racing show the show where i preview every single australian group one race that is ran across the racing calendar now this is episode four i'm going to be previewing two cracking group one races that are being ran at caulfield this saturday and uh, one of them is the sir rupert clark stakes and the other is the Underwood Stakes. Two cracking races with a lot of quality in both of the fields. So let's not waste any time. Let's get stuck in to previewing some races. I'll start with the Sir Rupert Clark Stakes. The Sir Rupert Clark Stakes is ran over the 1400 metre distance. It will be ran at 4.15pm at Caulfield as I have already mentioned. Of course you can watch the race on Racing.com 7.2 and Sky Racing 1. Let's have a look at the field and the odds. I'll start with the favourite, Counter Attack, who is coming in at $3.70. We then have Voodoo Lad at $5. Bonaram is at $7. Under the Louvre is at $9. Extravagant, the New Zealand horse, is backed by the Pundas at $11. Tavaki is also backed at $11. At $26, we've ha we have Thames Court. At $34, we have Fast and Rocking and Tilopia. We have Mr. Individual backed at $31. Benawia is at $41. Wellsprung is at $51. At $61 we have Charmed Harmony. Rangapo is backed by the punters at $67. And then at $81 we have Jungle Edge. So that is the field for the 2016 edition of the Sir Rupert Clark Stakes. Let's have a look at the horses in more Detail. We start off with number one, Under the Louvre, backed by the Punters at $9. Charged late in its last run at Flemington in the Bobby Lewis, but could only get fourth. Uh, I think this horse is within a, uh, a good chance of at least placing. It could possibly be that sneaky chance of winning. It's coming from Barrier 14. It's won from Barrier 13 before. That was in... The, uh, the Strad broke at Eagle Farm early June. So it can win from uh, these type of barriers, especially barrier 14. Dwayne Dunn is on board. It uh, was aboard this horse in its last run at Flemington. As I mentioned, the Bobby Lewis. Uh, one to watch, I think it's uh, definitely a chance to place. Possibly a chance to win. Back by the punters at $11, we have number two, Extravagant. As I mentioned before, the New Zealand horse who come to Australia for the Australian Guineas earlier in the year with a lot of hope of actually winning that race. But it turned out that uh, it could only come eighth out of the 15 runners in that race. And then since then, it hasn't really shown any good form in Australia whatsoever. It went back to New Zealand and came first in the Breeders' Stakes, but then came back to run in the Bobby Lewis just a couple of weeks ago at Flemington and actually came last. So I'm not sure what was wrong with it on that day. It came fourth in a recent trial run over the uh, 1,190 uh, metre distance. And, um, yeah, I, I think it's in poor form uh, going into this race, or in terms of, in Australia, in poor form. And I think uh, maybe New Zealand uh, suits this horse better than the Australian conditions. That just, that's just me personally, but um, I guess you can't rule it out. Damien Oliver is on board, but, um, yeah, I think $11 is generous, because like, I think this horse is in poor form going into this race. Number three, we have... Ranga Po, who came ninth in its last run at Duberton, has placed in four of its last five runs, but this is its first race 
ran over the 1400 meter distance for a while it will be a tough race for it it will find it tough and the odds do suggest that because it is backed by the punters at uh, a whopping $67 so not much of a chance to get in the top five for this horse. Number four we have Fast and Rocking who is going to be jockeyed by Stephen Baster has never won a race over the 1400 meters and it is a six year old horse uh, so that's the query going into this race for me it hasn't been in the best of form 11th out of 14 horses at Mooney Valley a few weeks ago over 1200 meters I can't really see it seeing it actually uh, be there at uh, the front and uh, winning this race. I think it's going to find this race quite tough. Number five, we have Charmed Harmony. You might remember that this horse ran in the Memsey Stakes. I previewed the Memsey Stakes and did say that this horse was in poor form going into that race. It ended up coming ninth out of the 12 horses in the Memsey Stakes just a month ago now. It still is in poor form, that's the uh, the simple fact. That race, uh, the Memsey, was over the 1,400 metres. I can't see this horse being uh, anywhere in the top five. I think it's going to be at uh, the, uh, the bottom end of the field. I think it's going to come maybe second or third last because this horse is in some poor form. Backed by the punters at $61 explains everything. But also it's form guide. It's not the best looking form guide for a horse. Number six we have Counter Attack who in its last race come second that was at Rose Hill. It was actually a bit late to get into a, uh, a decent position to actually win that race. It had the chance to win it but uh, it was back behind some horses that was basically in its way so it had to find a uh, I guess a, um, a correct way out that wasn't actually infringing any of the other horses. So it ended up coming second, although I reckon it should have or could have won that race if it got into a better position. It is the favourite for this race. It has a change in jockey uh, from its last run. Huey Bow Bowman was on this uh, horse in its last race. Craig Williams, one of the best in the business, is uh, on board this horse for this race, the Sir Rupert Clark Stakes. It is the one to beat, in my opinion. I think it's going to be there at the finish, the top three. Of course, the punters are predicting that it's going to win this race, and uh, rightly so. It's a good horse. It's been in good form. It does well over the 1,400 metres. The, uh, the distance certainly does suit. Number seven we have Voodoo Lad. I really like this horse. It's won three of its last five meetings. Its last start was incredible at Mooney Valley just a few weeks ago. It missed the start, was second last going down the straight and then somehow it was able to charge home and win this race. It was an incredible run. I loved it. I was looking back at this race when I was doing my research before the show and I tell you what, it ran a beautiful race. It came from uh, the back of the field to win the race in fine fashion. So I think this one is clearly one to watch. It is the second favourite. It's going to really take it up to counter-attack, no doubt about it. Number nine, we have Tavaki, back by the punters at $11. Patrick Maloney is the jockey for this race. Uh, it came second in the Bobby Lewis at Flemington a couple of weeks ago, which was not a bad run over the 1200 metres. It's not in bad form. It's definitely one of those roughies to watch in this race. Number 10, we have Bada I hope I pronounced that horse's name right. Correct me if I was wrong. Its form guide doesn't look too good, to be honest. And, um, well, its last win came in March. So since that win it's been in uh, not the best form. So it's going to find this race difficult. It's a Mick Price trained horse. Craig Newitt is on board. Craig Newitt has been on this horse for its last five runs. It's coming from barrier 13. It'll be interesting to see how this horse goes but uh, I don't think it's much of a chance to uh, finish in the top five or so. Number 11 we have Bonner Rum who is coming off a great win at Flemington a couple of weeks ago, there's been a change in jockey from that win with uh, Craig Williams coming out to run on counter-attack and Kieran McAvoy coming in. Uh, it did well, as I just mentioned, it won its last race and did very well to win that race over the 1,400 metres. The distance will suit, but I reckon this race will be a lot tougher than that race a couple of weeks ago. Has 
won some uh, some races actually over the 1400 metres at Caulfield. It's definitely one to watch out. It's definitely a chance to place in the top five. It will be up there towards the finish, I reckon. Number 12, we have Thames Court, who is backed by the punters at $26. Uh, came second in its last race over the 1400 metre distance at Flemington. That was a couple of weeks ago. Placed in, a, in four of its last five races. And uh, it was actually up front for most of the race in its last run. So um, it did well to stay up there, actually. And I think if it stays up the front like it did in its last run, I think this horse has a chance to play. So I think it's one to watch. It's a roughie. It has a change in jockey. Uh, Maloney out and uh, Corey Brown comes in to ride it. But um, I think this horse is one to watch. Barrier 1, it'll be interesting to see where it can uh, get in position after it comes out of barrier one. That's, I guess, the query. But um, it's definitely one to watch out. It was uh, quite okay in its last run. Did well to stay up the front and stay up the front throughout the whole race. Number 13, we have Tilopia, who was backed by the punters at $34. A Darren Weir trained horse was placed in four races before its last run, which it came eighth placed out of the 16 horses over the 1,400 metres at Flemington, Damien Olive, Oliver was aboard that horse that day. He comes out. Michael T, uh, Michael D, sorry, comes in as the jockey for this race in the Sir Rupert Clark Stakes. I think this horse will find this race quite tough. It's only a 67% chance to win, which means it's only a 40% chance. Oh, sorry, 40% chance to win a 67% chance to place so um, I think this horse will find it tough but um, it's probably got a better chance than some of the other horses in this race of possibly getting in the top eight or so. Number 14 is well sprung back by the punters at $51 has a win range of 1000 to 1200 uh, coming out of barrier 12 came second in its last race at Caulfield it's going to be a tough race for this horse, I reckon. Uh, hasn't won over the 1,400 metres, and I guess that's the query for me. Number 15, we have Jungle Edge, back by the punters at $81. Uh, came second in the Regal roll Roller at Caulfield on uh, the 13th of August uh, 2016. Uh, it's been placing in a lot of its races and its trial runs, but... Um, yeah, this, this horse is probably unknown to a lot of the racing world. And um, to be honest, uh, with the quality that it's up against, I think it's going to find this race quite tough, especially to get into the top five. And finally, number 16, we have Mr. Individual, back by the punters at $31. Has been doing okay in some of its recent trial runs. But um, it's just like some of the other horses in this race. It will find it tough against uh, a lot of the uh, the bigger horses in this race, such as Counter Attack, uh, Lad, as well as Bonaram Under the Louvre. It will find it tough against those races, uh, against those horses. So um, yeah, but it's it's in okay form. It uh, can do. I think the fourteen hundred meters will suit. But like I said, we'll find it tough against some of the quality horses in this uh, race. Okay, time now to finish off my Sir Rupert Clark Stakes preview with my tips. I mentioned before that Counter Attack is the one to beat in this race, and I actually think it will be beaten. I think uh, Voodoo Lad will beat it. It's backed by the punters at $5. It's a Darren Weir trained horse who is in great form going into this race. It had a beautiful run in its last start to come back from uh, second last right through to win the race, which I thought was quite stunning. And uh, it's uh, won its last two races also as uh, a matter of fact. So I think it's going to beat Counter Attack. Uh, it will be a close duel, I reckon, to the, to the finish line between those two. And that's where my second place goes to is uh, Counter Attack, who uh, is going to be ridden by Craig Williams. I think Craig Williams is good for the horse, although Huey Bowman has uh, had a good run on Counter Attack. Uh, in its last three runs, uh, placing in a couple of those. It's going to be a good duel between uh, Counter Attack and Voodoo Lad, but I think Counter Attack is going to come second best. And then I've given third to number one under the Louvre, who actually has beaten Counter Attack before. He actually, uh, this horse actually beaten 
counter-attack in uh, the early part of June at Eagle Farm. So that might be a big jewel in the race as well. And in fact, this horse might be a chance to come first. But I reckon it'll come third, back by the punters at $9. Like I said, charged late in the Bobby Lewis, but just couldn't quite get to the first position of the race before the horses cross the finish line. So uh, I guess the positioning and also the barrier will play a big part in uh, how this horse goes in this race, but I think it's going to come third. And finally, the roughie of the race, uh, it was really out of Thames Court and Tavaki. I thought those were the two real roughies to look out for. I could have went both, but I've decided to go Thames Court, who will be ridden by Corey Brown, which is a change in jockey for this horse. It came second over the 1,400 metres in its last start, and like I said, it stayed up the front for the entire race. So that's what makes me very interested in this horse. It's uh, actually uh, placed in four of its last five races as well. So um, back by the punters at $26, I think this could be a horse that has a, uh, a chance of placing. In fact, it's uh, placed at uh, 78% uh, in, as opposed to the win of, of 33%. But I think this horse could possibly have a sneaky chance of winning. So roughly the race, Thames Court. That's the roughy of the race for me. From one race we go to another. It is the Underwood Stakes being ran at 4.55 p.m. just after the Sir Rupert Clark Stakes. This is a high quality field. Ran over the 1800 metre distance. You can see there that Blackheart Bart is the favourite at $2.60. Lucia Valentina, we haven't seen this horse for a while is second best at $4.40. We then have Awesome Rock at $7. He or she is at $11. Tarzino at $13. Tavarco is at $19. The Cleaner is also at $19. Jackanort Bay at $31 as well as Prince of Penzance. And then finally, Howard Be Thy Name at a whopping $101. Number one, we have Prince of Penzance backed by the punters at $31, as you just heard, in its last two runs in the Maccabi Diva Stakes and the Memzi, which is uh, two great Group 1 races, which I have already previewed on the show, of course, uh, didn't do so well. So, um, in saying that, uh, it, uh, I don't think this horse is going to provide much in this race. It's been in poor form since the Melbourne Cup, and I think it's going to continue that in the Underwood Stakes. Number two, we have Blackheart Bart, a Darren Weir trained horse. We know that this horse has been a superstar over this year. It was beaten by Palantino in the Maccabi Diva Stakes uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Palantino was so good on that day and uh, it was very good to beat Blackheart Bart. But this horse is the favourite in this race and it's still the one to beat. And uh, it had Damien Oliver on board this horse in the Maccabi Diva Stakes. Now that uh, Brad is back on board, I think this horse is definitely going to be the big horse to beat. No doubt about it. It's the favourite for a reason. Number four, we have the Cleaner, who used to be trained under a great Tasmanian trainer in Mick Bells. Uh, I used to get very excited about uh, seeing this horse race, especially when it was in a Group 1, but I no longer get that excitement because I'm disappointed with uh, how the owners have uh, moved on from Mick Bells and taken this horse in the direction that it's trying to try, then that's the trainers are actually trying to take this horse in. Uh, to be honest, uh, being at nine years old, I think this horse was ready to retire. And the, the form guide isn't good since the Cox Plate uh, last year, which it came seventh in. It hasn't really done much in its races. The Lawrence Stakes, 11th. The Phenon, uh, it came fifth. Uh, over the 1,800 metre distance, I, to be honest, I don't think this horse has any hope in this race. I'd be very surprised if it got up and, uh, got up and won. Uh, just in my opinion, I think this horse uh, it, it's had its day now. I think it should be retired, and I'm, I'm disappointed with, with how the owners treated uh, Mick Bells in the end. Uh, he didn't deserve to get sacked. He did some very good things with this horse, but um, the owners obviously just don't have any common sense. Number five, we have Jackanort Bay, who is uh, jockeyed by Damien Lane in this race. I thought this horse did very well to get fourth in the Maccabi Diva Stakes a couple of weeks ago, which has ran over the 1,600 metres. I thought it did well too. I actually didn't expect it to be in the top five, and it, it was. So, um, 
Barrier 4 um, came second in the Lawrence from Barrier 3. It's coming from Barrier 4. Could be one of the chances in this race, I think. Number 6, we have Awesome Rock, who uh, I famously saw lose to a protest on Australian Cup Day in the Australian Cup to prefer it. Uh, very unlucky to... Uh, to not win that race in the end. It did win it, but then obviously was challenged uh, with a protest and lost it. Uh, won the Fian over uh, 1,600 metres a couple of weeks or a few weeks ago. Did very well to win that race. Uh, I think this horse is in good form going into this race. And at the 1,800 metre mark, it does do okay over the, over the longer distances. So I think the 1,800 metre distance will suit. Looking forward to seeing this horse. I reckon it's a good chance of getting in the top five. Back by the punters at uh, a, uh, an odds of $11, we have number 7, Hiyoshi, who I, uh, a couple of weeks ago in my Maccabi Diva Stakes preview, I said that it would be the roughie of the race for the Maccabi Diva Stakes, and it actually came third in that race, so it did well to uh, to place, and um, yeah, it's, it's still got Craig Williams on board, so this horse, uh, anything is possible. I think it is a, a little bit of a chance, but Barrier 1's a little bit of a concern. I'm not sure where what it can do from Barrier 1. Uh, and also, the 1800 metre mark, it may not suit this horse this distance. It'll be interesting to see how it goes over this distance, because it hasn't actually won over the 1800 metre distance. So, that's, the couple of, uh, that's a couple of concerns, but I, I think this horse is uh, more... Um, is definitely one of the chances of this race. Maybe fifth spot, maybe sixth. Uh, yeah, it, it, obviously it's it's only a 43% chance to win, 62% chance to place. May place. Uh, it is it is a roughie. Number eight, we have Tarzino, of course, the winner of the Rose Hill Guineas. Hasn't really been in the best of form lately. The Memsey Stakes that came eighth and uh, it came tenth in the Maccabi Diva Stakes a couple of weeks ago. I was a bit disappointed in how that horse performed that day. Uh, normally does well over the longer distances, but um, I think the last two starts uh, suggests to me that this horse might be at the back end of the field, but you can't rule it out. Back by the punters at $19, we have Tavago number 9, who came 11th in its last run at Mooney Valley a few weeks ago over the 1600 metre distance. Has been running uh, quite frequently over the 2,000 metre distance or further, so it hasn't been running over uh, those 16 uh, four, or 1,400 metre distances right through uh, and beyond or less. So, uh, but 1,800 metres might suit, but um, yeah, it hasn't been in the best of form to be honest. Uh, it, um, it it might find this race a bit tough. Uh, it is only a 38% uh, chance to win, 63% chance to place. Coming from barrier 9, it is an okay barrier, I think, uh, yeah, interesting, it's going to be interesting to see how this horse goes, you can't really rule it out, uh, because it, it can run over these longer distances, but I, I think this horse might find it tough. Number 10, Howard, be thy name, a Darren Weir trained horse, backed by the punters at a whopping $101, poor form guide suggests that this horse is uh, a very limited chance of getting up in this race and uh, if you put a dollar each way bet on this horse and it gets up then you are a very lucky person because this horse hasn't been in the best of form especially going in to this race it also hasn't been running over the the distance uh, required to run at in this race and finally we have number 11 Lucia Valentino who we haven't really seen a lot of uh, I guess this year uh, it came first in the Queen Elizabeth over the 2,000 metres uh, in the early parts of April. Its uh, last competitive run over the 1,400 metre distance, it came fourth out of the seven, horse, uh, seven horses in that race. Uh, that was its return from a bit of a spell. It's uh, second favourite in this race. I think it's going to be up there in the top three. It's a good horse. It's uh, normally good over these 1,800 metre distances even further. Of course, the Queen Elizabeth stakes is 2,000 metres, so 200 metres uh, short of that race, it should do well, especially from barrier six. It's uh, got Damien Oliver on board, so uh, one of the best in the business uh, aboard a horse who um, is definitely one of the chances. Okay, time now for my tips uh, for the 2016 Underwood Stakes at Caulfield. I start with my first placed 
horse, and that is the favourite. Black Heart Bath um, was beaten by Palantino last start. It is stepping up to that 1800 metre distance, which it hasn't won at uh, before, I believe, but with Brad back on board, I think this horse will do very nicely, and I think it will win this race. So Black Heart Bart is my uh, winner. Uh, we then have uh, second uh, Awesome Rock. Uh, normally does well over these uh, longer distances. I think this horse will be there at the finish. It actually did well in its last start. I liked its uh, last run. So um, second is Awesome Rock for me. And then finally third is Lucia Valentino. Uh, we, oh, I like this horse. It's a good horse. Uh, it will be definitely up there at the finish. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it wins it, to be honest, but um, considering this is probably its first race uh, with uh, the quality horses for a while, ever since the, probably the Queen Elizabeth, I think it will come third, but um, it, will, uh, it will be up there challenging, I reckon, especially uh, Black Heart Bart and uh, Awesome Rock. It will be a bit late out, though. That's what the speed uh, map suggests, so that's why I have decided to place it at third, and then my roughie of the race, uh, Jackanaw Bay. I, I think uh, it did well to come fourth in its last start. Uh, it will be out early. It may head the field early. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it leads it for the first maybe um, 1,000 metres to maybe 1,200 to 1,400 metres. Uh, maybe it will be in front, uh, maybe in the top three. Yeah, it could be a chance. It could be a chance. I think um, you, can't, you can't rule it out. I think it's definitely... It's definitely a roughie to look out for. And that is it for this episode of the big Group 1 Racing Show. Thank you very much for clicking on and watching. Of course, don't forget to like, comment and share this video. And also press that subscribe button because a new episode of this show will be available each and every week right up until the Melbourne Cup Carnival. Of course, there's at least one Group 1 now uh, for the next month or so as we edge closer to that uh, big week in Australian racing, world racing, and that is the Melbourne Cup Carnival. So uh, thank you very much for watching once again, and until next week, I'm Jacob. Enjoy the races on Saturday. Bye for now.